and you will never ever, nobody on planet Earth will ever see the coffees come back like it was one time. We never could have conceived that now I have trouble finding a codfish to show to a student. The only thing I can say about a codfish that I learned about a codfish, they can still cod you. <laughs> you know, you, you think you've got to figure it out and, uh, you know, but then you don't, eh? Until the 1960s, the abundance of Atlantic cod in Newfoundland and Labrador waters was the largest in the world. But for most people today, it is difficult to imagine that abundance. We need to consult the people who witnessed it firsthand prior to the groundfish moratoriums of the early 1990s. We saw these huge uh, schools of, of cod. Now, when I mean huge, these, these schools measure like 20 by 30 kilometers. I mean, they're, they're, they're amazing. See, see the codfish be migrating into this harbor when, in the summertime when the cape, on the Cape go. And when the sun would be setting, we all came, you, you would hear the codfish chomping into the, into the Cape. Land. The whole ocean was alive with, with codfish. Yeah, back about 20 years ago, you could still see uh, cod in, uh, in schools along the wharfs, especially near the fish plants. And it's really impressive when you see the backs of cod in such abundance that the fins are actually breaking the surface of the water. I remember waking up in the early morning and hearing the, the make and break engine. You know, the men were all going out to the traps. They'd come in and they'd have, you know, skiff loads of fish. Sometimes they'd tow a dory that was loaded with, uh, with codfish. Uh, we used to make three, uh, three runs a day, one in the morning, one midday, and one in the afternoon. And uh, we got so just about 800 cattle in uh, 10, 11 days. The families that salted and dried the fish, as well as the merchants, were very skilled in handling cod in abundance. Jack Troke fished from Twillingate, where his ancestors first settled nearly three centuries ago. Now right here where I got this, this building here, this was a great big flake built right over the water, right along with the edge of the road there, and then right along with the edge of that cliff right there was a 80 foot stage. And then he had his little wharf, little stage he'd go out till he'd come in with his traps gave him. And that's, this year we had, he had eight or nine other candles sorted in this stage with just a walkway to get through with the wellbar and a salt pound right there, of course, and you pack them around four feet, three and a half, four feet high. Rex Brown's family operated fishing premises in Placentia Bay. The Browns purchased in 1964 in excess of 4,000 candles of cod, and roughly, very roughly, it was almost, the ratio was almost five to one between uh, a pound, let us say, of dry fish and a pound of fish as it came out of the water. So the, uh, the 4,000 uh, cantles of fish that the Browns would have purchased in 1964 uh, would be over two million pounds uh, out of the water. Descriptions of past abundance help us to understand what we have lost and to create a vision for the future. In 1968, the total landings, or catch, of Atlantic cod in Newfoundland and Labrador waters was 800,000 metric tons. During the 1980s, the average yearly catch dropped to 257,000. But in 2009, the total catch was only about 2% of the catch in 1968. Understanding past abundance is a first step in working towards recovery. But recovery is about more than just abundance. Other key aspects include age, migration, sea temperature and other effects of climate change, availability of prey such as capelin, spawning behavior, condition of the habitat and how it may be affected by pollution and disturbance, predators such as seals and other fish, 
and other natural mortality. A big factor, of course, is fishing. How much and where? For three decades, George Rose has been studying the behavior of wild cod and using sonar to measure their schools. This is an echogram from Smith Sound. It was taken in the springtime of 2005. And uh, we're at here, this is the bottom, this red part. This is about 220, 230 meters of water. And these are moving fish. That is, they're up off the bottom. You can see each one of these little traces, boomerangs, is an individual codfish. And you can see they form this layer at, at about oh, 25 to 50 meters, or maybe a bit more, 75 meters. And the, the top ones, the high flyers, as we call them, are up around 100 meters off the bottom. So they're, they're just kind of, when they're up like this, they're typically moving. Um, in, when they're migrating like this, the larger fish are usually out front, or there's a higher proportion of the larger fish will be at the, on the leaders. We call them the scouts that are out, out front. And then uh, beyond that, you'll, at the, the rear, you tend to get the smaller fish. So they sort themselves out by size. Now, it's not always like that, because if they were stationary, the bigger ones are usually in the middle, and the smaller ones are around the periphery of the aggregation. Cod may live for 25 years, they can grow to a very large size, reaching a maximum length of 1.5 meters and a weight of 75 kilograms. They begin to spawn sometime between the ages of three and seven. The courtship dance is elaborate. This is what they do when they're, where they're in these, we call these columns, then this courtship spawning behavior, and they go into these stacks of, of fish, and you know we've got we we've been monitoring this for years how they do this and uh, and then we've what we've tried to do is to actually get the ROV to actually watch them down there when they're doing that. So that's the drumming sound, and the, this is actually live. And you, you know it was kind of interesting because they're just they just kind of you know they don't do much they just kind of float there and there, but. You know, we could see the columns. You see how one's going one way and the other one's going the other way? There, it's, it's almost like you can see the formation in that. If a female cod lives to an age of 20 years, she will have produced about 50 million eggs, the majority of those eggs during her final years. These older cod are important to recruitment, and their behavior is very different than younger cod. John Gillett has fished all his life, and he remembers seeing the older, large cod. You know, when I was when I was uh, a young fellow there, you know, I used to go out with uh, with the, uh, some of the cod trap fishermen there in Twangit area. And uh, as the trap was being hauled and the doorways were closed, these large fish would float up in the in the cod traps, and uh, they were, re would refer to them as blowers. The, these are larger fish and they do have a hair bladder, and they don't take too kindly to being all up through the water columns. Uh, so this hair bladder, uh, commonly known as a sound bone, expands, and they come, to the, they come to the surface of water like a bloom. These fish, uh, these, uh, these blower fish, you know, uh, anything over 50 pounds would be, would be called a, a blower, you know, referred to as a blower up to probably 100 pounds. Uh, you would always have a, a gaff last side. You would see a fish is going to drop out, you look at it and try to retrieve it. And I saw this great big codfish, big old blower coming up, sliding on down the twine, and I was hanging on with one hand and reached out, put my gaff in his head, and I haven't seen the fish in their gaff since. They would be huge. They, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. When I was diving with other divers, they would be, as long as the divers I was diving with, counting the fins of the divers. They were, they were gigantic. I was taking pictures so I wasn't paying too much attention to what was happening and I got knocked head over heels and they're really aggressive. They'd be swimming to you as fast as you could swim towards them because they just wanted to see whether you were edible or not. During times of abundance, millions of females were releasing trillions of eggs each year into these waters. But the survival rate of eggs is very low. Only one in a million may survive to juvenile age. Juvenile cod are, 
fish that arrive from the plankton are about this size and when they reach the bottom. And of course, everything feeds on juvenile cod when they're this size. They're very important because this is, gives you the first picture of what you're going to see six or seven years from now to recruitment to the fishery. One of the impressive things about these juvenile cod when they arrive is that they arrive in a storm of fish coming down. There's just so many of them that they tend to swamp the predators. The predators can't eat them all up. But that, of course, changed over time because if you think back 20, 30 years ago, this storm of little fish arriving was much larger. And now as the stocks have declined, the storm of little fish also has declined. We've got good numbers on that. And so we're, we're just not seeing the total storm of these little fish arriving. And so they're no longer able to overwhelm the predators as they did in the past. How can we encourage people to take an active interest in cod recovery? For starters, we can ask harvesters to tell us about their work. What have they experienced at sea and what changes have they observed over the years? We can also take young people out on the water, share their enthusiasm for what they discover, and encourage their sense of wonder about the ocean. I see him! Is I see big? him! Is he big? You have three on you! Yeah. I'm three! <laughs> no, definitely a new Look at that. Oh, see, Cormac, he's a first godfish. Oh, oh, there weren't, the, the fish weren't big, but there were fish there. And uh, they just had a hoot. I mean, the hauling up the fish. I've, I don't think I've ever seen them so excited. But these guys were just over the moon pulling in the, the codfish. I caught three! We can also protect the coastal habitat of juvenile cod, kelp beds, eelgrass, and cobble. People can uh, take care of the waters they can see from their own backyard as opposed to more offshore waters which are uh, further away and people can't really see and take care of. There should be uh, as little pollution as possible in the bays, uh, as little construction as necessary because the shoreline is the place that the juvenile cod uh, survive best and, and they just live in the, uh, the shallows near the seaweeds and the rocks. And uh, you know, these are places that you don't want much disturbance if, if, you know, unless it's absolutely necessary. we need to have a discussion about cod. To begin, we might ask ourselves some basic questions. We first of all have to decide as what we are aiming for, what we would like to have there. What are the, what are the factors that control the productivity of, of these cod stocks? Why has the productivity been so low? And what can we do as a kind of a fishing society? What can we do to try to make that, make that better? Well, you need to focus on what type of fishery do you want, but also what type of a province do you want here in Newfoundland and Labrador? Uh, you know, do we want small communities? Uh, I haven't heard anyone say, or very few people say, that we don't want uh, rural communities, fishing communities. And, or, and in order to have these communities, I mean, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna need to have industry and the industry that has supported these communities and are going to continue to be is fishing and the fish that has uh, done that uh, for the most part has been cod and still is to a large degree even with the small catches we have now. I think we should ask uh, ourselves what kind of product do we want to sell and uh, how big our enterprises should be. We should ask ourselves is there room for small family enterprises like there once was? Everyone has a different relationship to the sea. It is our responsibility to care for the sea and to work together for cod recovery. When it comes to stewardship, all of us can help. It's too much a part of our history and our future. You know, it's too important uh, not to focus on, and it's not a matter of if we can succeed, it's a matter of how are we going to succeed. I think that's, uh, we'll need everyone's input to do that. I, I want to see big schools of big codfish that I can show to my children and my grandchildren. I don't want to just see lots of little codfish, I want to see big ones. Mm -hmm.